again, I'm glad to be with you, especially during this Advent season. Advent is a word that we use to signal our own preparation, our own excitement, our own anticipation about not just the arrival of Christ in human history, but the coming of Christ into our lives. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And the word we use for the fourth Sunday is the word love. I suspect most of us have people whom we read who feed our own spirits. There are certain authors who seem to say things in a way that speak to me. One of those people is Frederick Beatner, who died recently. Frederick Beatner was raised in a household that had nothing to do with the Christian faith or any faith for that matter. Sadly, his father committed suicide when Frederick Beatner was 10 years old. Later, through the preaching of a minister that he heard in New York City, a man by the name of George Buttrick, Beekner came to know the Christ. He enrolled in seminary, probably never having been to church more than 20 times in his life. He had an aunt who lived in New York City. She came to have lunch with him and she was talking about his decision to go to seminary. She looked at him across the table and she said, Fred, is this your decision or have you been ill-advised? He finished seminary and he has written so many things that have spoken to my life. Probably the primary thing that Beekner has emphasized in his writings is listen to your life. Listen to what is going on in your life. Listen to the feelings of grief, but also the feelings of gratitude. Listen. Listen to the things that discourage you. But at the same time, listen to the things that give you courage for the living of your days and your nights. Paul is writing to the Romans. And it's interesting how different Paul's writing style in his letter to the church or maybe churches in Rome is different from 1 Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul, crisp and sharp, rejoice in the Lord always, pray without ceasing. But in the letter to the Romans, I'm afraid, Paul, you wouldn't pass the English class in my high school because it seems as if you can't end a sentence. He goes on and on with commas, but never ending a sentence. Paul is talking about love, even though he doesn't use the word love in this passage. But he does say this. Through the ages, God has been waiting to unveil and reveal the mystery. 
the mystery, which is Christ. Mystery is not something that we look at and it's all darkness, but mystery is something in Paul's language, a beautiful word that means at just the right time, our eyes are open and God gives us the gift. It's like, it's like a young man and young woman who have been dating. They've been dating for a year and she keeps waiting to hear the words that she wants to hear. But he's filled with compliments like, I really enjoy being with you. I love the times that we have together and the times that we talk. But then one day the mystery is unveiled. Probably in stammering words, he gets down on one knee and says to her, I love you. I want to marry you. And the mystery. Two people who experience love. I wonder in our own lives, I wonder in my own life, if I have allowed the love of God to penetrate deeply into my spirit. It's not enough. When I was preaching, I remember how many times I would get up to say to people something like, listen to your life. Listen to the love, the unconditional love that God has for you. And then in my own journey, the difficulty, not just of saying the words, because the words may come too easy for those of us who preach. But the mystery of one day realizing that God loves us in an unconditional way. That the last word of God is a word of grace. Such a busy season, isn't it? Racing from one place to the other. But also, thinking about those people for whom this is such a difficult time. She used to be able to hang the mistletoe in the middle of the living room. And every time her husband passed by, she would meet him with a kiss. And now she sits at home, the children are far away. The mistletoe is gone. Her husband isn't there. I wish, I wish I could fix everything, but I can't. But what I can say is this, whether you feel like it or not, God loves you with an incredible love. Listen to your life. 
Listen to God as he speaks to you. This is a God who loves each of us as if we were the only person to love. Thanks be to God. Amen.